Hey everyone, Akanski here, and today I want to talk about Profile Service, which is a newly released standalone data store module. Its goal is to be very secure and cover many edge cases that most people don't think about when saving data, and it does a good job at that. It's very beginner friendly, and considering the way it's used compared to the features it has, this module probably makes for the easiest data storing there has been on Roblox. So in this, I'll be explaining a little bit about what it has in store and how you can get started with this module. So let's talk about what features it has, and then we'll make a time-based money reward part to show you how to use it. So after looking at all this module has to offer, I've broken down the features into five main ones. The first two are fairly standard, the second two are the big features, and the last one is a bit subjective, but I wanted to throw it in the list anyway. So up first we have auto caching, and this basically handles all the data locally once the profile is loaded, so there's no delay time in reading and writing data by caching the data, and it does all of this automatically. Secondly, it has auto saving, which saves a profile's data periodically. It can handle many players on a server by spreading out all the data saving uh, like evenly to make sure your server stays within the limit of the Roblox API, and it does all of that automatically as well. Uh, third, we have session locking, and this is probably the biggest feature about this module. Session locking ensures that only one server can access a particular data store profile at a time, preventing multiple servers from editing the same data. This does prevent what would cause certain bugs like item duplication and item loss. Uh, fourth, we have global updates, and this is a functionality that allows you to send information to player profiles outside of the current server or to player profiles not currently in a server. This is good for allowing online players to send GIFs or messages to players that are offline. And lastly, we have just general ease of use and efficiency. In general, this module is really easy to use and beginner friendly. Upon reviewing the, how the code is set up, I can also say that this module is really well optimized and you won't have too many uh, resources being taken up or too many data store calls at a time. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is put together a time-based money part and what this part is going to do is give players money whenever they touch it, but it will only give it to them every 10 minutes or so. So it's going to record inside of data store how much money they have and when was the last time they touched the part. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to have three scripts, which is two modules and a script. Uh, one is, of course, profile service. One will be the data manager and the other one will be the money part script. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. First thing I'm going to do is import profile service. I have the model in my toolbox. Link to that will be in the description, of course. Uh, and then I'm going to make a data manager. This is the manager that's actually going to use profile service, so I'll go ahead and require it to it. Local So now that it's required, and data manager is a module itself, so I'm going to give it a table that I, it can return. And the whole purpose of data manager is to load profiles using profile service and then give it to other scripts when they need it. So I'm going to make a profiles table to store those profiles. And then I'm going to make a function to get those profiles by uh, a player. All right, so that's the basics of my data manager out of the way. Now let's actually use a uh, profile service to load those profiles. So the first thing I need to do with profile service is use the function, if I can load it up here. Um, where is it? Should be at the top. Get profile store because I need a profile store. And in order to do that, I use get profile store as a function of profile service. And I pass in a name for that store as well as a template for the data. 
the name is a string and the template is a table that's going to get copied so why don't we go ahead and do that and it's going to return a profile store i should mention that so local profile store I'm going to call it player and for the template I'm going to give it cash and uh, last used money part time or yeah last used money part time all right so now we have a we have a profile store and this profile store is going to be used to load profiles once we have players to load them with. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a player, but uh, usually when you're making player data, that's what you base it off of. So I'm going to go ahead and make a on player added function. And I'm going to connect it to player service dot players added. And I should probably also um, get the pro get the player service. All right. Now, once I have a player joining my game, I'm going to get his profile by using the function of profile store called. If I go right here, load profile sync, and this will return a profile assuming that uh, it works. So let's go ahead and we have to pass in a profile key, which is basically the name of the profile and what's known as a not released handler. The not released handler just kind of gives you an option as to what to do if the profile is locked by another server. Now what force load will do is if this server, if this profile store is trying to load this profile and it's currently being locked by another server for whatever reason, uh, it will try to steal that um, that session from that server and lock it to this one because we know that this is the one the player is actually on so that's what force load does you have op other options you can throw in a function there and it'll give you a place ID and a j game job ID um, that's just if you want to do something different but we're gonna use force load so grabbing the profile local profile I'm sorry profile store Uh, name of the profile is just going to be player underscore and then concatenated with the ID and then force load all right so we need to do a nil check on the profile we need to check if it exists because it's possible that it, it might not have worked so if it didn't work, I'm just going to go ahead and kick the player, but most of the time it should work, so we should continue. And then once I do have my profile, I'm going to, since loading the profile takes time and there is a chance that the player can actually leave before that profile loads, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick check to see if the player is still in the game. So one way of doing that is using uh, if player is descendant of players, player service, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and take their profile and just store it in my profiles table. If they happen to have left, uh, I have to do something with the profile. I can't just throw it away. I have to call release on it. And that's going to take away that session lock that I talked about earlier. And one last thing is I have to create a callback for what to do when the profile is released. So that's just basically removing it from the table. And we do that by using the function uh, profile. Scroll down here. Profile listen to release and we just pass in a function on what to do when the profile is released. Profile listen to release. 
function and I'm just going to remove it remove the profile from the profiles table as well as kick the player because they should they shouldn't even be in the game at most of the time but just in case I can safely kick them all right and that should be it for the player added function uh, now all I have to do is add a removing player removing function uh, connect on player removing I'm gonna move it down here as well as uh, actually making the function I'm going to try to get their profile from the profiles table. And if it exists, then we're just going to call release on it. This will trigger the listen to release function that we added and remove it, remove it from the table. Again, they Again, if it's on player removing, that means the player's leaving, so uh, adding a kick there just in case uh, doesn't hurt anything. All right, so that's about it for the data manager. This is kind of where you get to choose how you want to set it up. This is just kind of an example, and it's largely based upon the example code given in the actual dev forum post, but I just wanted to give kind of right through it again and kind of explain what each line means, especially the functions of the profiles themselves and how the session locking works as well. Uh, so now I'm going to move on and make the uh, actual money part script and it's going to use the data manager. So the data manager uses profile service and then my money part script and any other data using script will use data manager. One last thing I wanted to mention about or that I forgot to mention about the data manager and the get function of it is that uh, player or I'm sorry profiles have a table called data and that's actually where you read and write to all the things that you want to save. Um, and I, in my get function, I return the profile. I actually don't want to return the profile. I want to return profile.data because that's all I'm concerned about. All right, so moving on. All right, so. All right, so in the interest of time, I've gone ahead and wrote the money part script uh, off screen. All right, so I've gone ahead and wrote the money part script uh, off camera in the interest of time. Uh, basically, it's just a part.touched connection to a function called onTouched, and I grab the player, and then if I see if the player exists, and then we move from there. Uh, just I just want to highlight uh, where and how I use data-related stuff. So, of course, I require uh, my data manager here up at the top and store it in a variable called data manager, and then I grab the player's data once I have the player uh, by doing local data equals data manager get player and that's just how I have my data manager set up that's uh, how you get you get to choose how you like to do that so that's the uh, what I like about this profile service there's no get or set methods you write that yourself um, and then once I have the data or I have what could be the data I have to check if that data exists or if it's nil if it's nil then I print player.name does not have data profile loaded if it does then I continue uh, I just get the current time the time since last use money part uh, right here I use data dot last use money part time which by default remember is zero uh, and then I have my wait time which is 10 minutes uh, if the time since last use money part is greater than the wait time then we increment their money by doing data dot money plus equals 500 and I also set their last use money part time to the current time and then I print how much money they have now 
and if they haven't waited long enough since the last time they touched the part then it will say player.name must wait seconds before use and then how much more seconds is calculated by just taking the wait time and subtracting the time since the last use money part all right so let's go ahead and publish this to a game and test it out all right so i'm in game and ready to test i've got my console up on the server so I can read all the server messages and I also have a uh, alternate account to test with as well so let's go ahead and have me touch the part and it says I now have 500 money and it tells me since I don't have a debalance on the touch part it just hits it a bunch of times um, it tells me how much I now have to wait which is 600 seconds and then it was 599 if I touch it again it'll say 584 so it's it's counting down and keeping track uh, let me go ahead and hit it with my mobile device and see now my alternate account has 500 money as well as uh, the same message about 600 seconds so now I'm gonna leave on both accounts and I'm gonna come back in like five minutes and it should say about it should say I have to wait about 300 seconds so that'll be a test to see if it's uh, working right and then I'll come back in another five minutes and see if I can collect another 500 cash All right, I've come back about five minutes later, and I'm going to open up the console and just check on how it's doing And it's about a little under 300 seconds a little under five minutes to go. How about my alternate account? Uh, it's about the same time. All right, so it's uh, keeping track of the timestamps pretty well so I'm gonna come back in another five minutes and see if it gives me the 500 extra cash okay final test of the day gonna touch it and I now have a thousand money gonna have my other account touch it and same thing works pretty well so that about wraps up this tutorial guys. If you thought it was interesting or useful, be sure to check out the dev forum post in the description, as well as check out Lalaris and his games over at Mad Studios. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.